Hello, design and analysis students. Welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at how to do a reliability analysis with SPSS. And more specifically, we're going to be looking at Chromevax Alpha. Chromevax Alpha is one of a number of measures of internal consistency where we can see if the items we have on a test all play well together to give us a good recipe. So this is a kind of reliability that's used for designing survey instruments and figuring out if your survey instrument is a good one or at least good enough. So we take those items, we look at it together, and we see the relationships between each item and each other item to see how they fit. In class, we talked about this in a metaphor by figuring out if we could make good chicken soup. Chicken soup would be our recipe, and we'd want to throw in carrots and celery and chicken and broth and onions and salt and pepper, but not chocolate chips and eggs and flour. Even though those are good things and make a nice chocolate cake, they don't make good chicken soup. So we're trying to figure out a situation where we're making one recipe for one thing with all those flavors that are going to complement each other well. No matter how good chocolate is, it doesn't belong in chicken soup. In a Chromevax Alpha, um, the recipe would be able to help tell us if we've thrown in something that shouldn't be there. So um, what we want is a measure that's unidimensional. One dimension, one thing. Chicken soup, not chocolate cake. All right. So let's take a look at how we would do this statistically. We're going to be practicing with the item we used in class, which is sports fan items from that opening survey that students took. So we've got six items shown here that we want to put together into one big measure, one recipe for being a sports fan. So what we would do is go to our data right here and look for the particular items to put in to that recipe. We can go to analyze, which you can get to from the data view or from the output view, scale, and reliability analysis. Okay. It by default sets it up as alpha. I've put the six factors that I want to see how they relate together, and I've given it a name that will help me remember what I'm doing, SF for sports fan, tote for total. So I'm looking at how these items go together to make up a measure about being a sports fan. Under statistics, we want to make sure we've selected item, scale, and scale if deleted. We want the inter-item correlations, the relationship between each item and each other item. And we want the means, so we could look at some descriptive information if we needed it. Once you have these things selected, push Continue and OK, and it will give us an idea of how good our measure is. So it tells us how many people answered all those questions. This is if someone skipped a question or questions, so we can't use them out of the total data. And the first thing here is it gives us a measure of the alpha and tells us how many items we put in there. All right. Remember that anything above 0.7 is sufficient for research, and anything above 0.9 is good in clinical kinds of settings where we're really making important decisions about people's lives, hospitals, medical stuff, therapy. All right. So that standard of 0.7 is for measures in general, 0.9 if we're doing something where we're intervening with people. It gives you the item statistics, sample size, mean and standard deviation for each particular item, so you could see the raw scores on those things. And then the first thing we use to decide if we've got a good recipe is this inter-item correlation matrix. Each of these values is a correlation coefficient, a relationship between this thing and this thing. What we want is a pattern of relationships that are at least 0.3, positive 0.3, which would be a moderate positive relationship, between each item and every other item. This part of the box mirrors this part because first we have this, then that, or that, then this, and it comes out to be um, shadow copies of the same relationship. If these are all positive um, and at least 0.3, then we've got a pretty good recipe. Everything's flowing and jiving and connecting together. If we see um, zero correlations between an item and other things, that means it's not really helpful. 
If we see negative items, it might mean that one of the items is doing the opposite of what we wanted. Maybe lots of the items are scaled in a positive direction, and one of the ways we ask the question a negative answer would be a higher score. So we might need to do some reverse coding, or sometimes thinking about flipping the script with some items so they're all jiving in the same direction if we see negative items here. Um, lots of zero correlations or negative items will also give us um, a lower Chromevax alpha. So if you see a really low score here, it means your items aren't playing well together. You may have called it chicken soup, but you're not really making chicken soup. You're making something different. And if you see a negative score here, it might mean that you've got some of those items that are going the wrong way. And we need to kind of line them all up so that the traffic or the herd of sheep is all moving in the same direction right if we want those things to be considered together the other place that we look to figure out if we've got a good measure is two columns here in the item total statistics we want to see if each item on the scale correlates with the total score that would be for the scale if we'd added them all up so this is an indicator the higher these are that that particular item is contributing well to the recipe you can't really make chicken soup without chicken broth Right. So if we had an item here that was throwing off the groove, um, it would not have a good correlation with everything else in the recipe. Here, it helps tell us if maybe we could make our measure stronger if we take something out or will our measure get worse if we take something out. So if we, for example, right now have a Chromevax alpha of 0.94, which is really strong, then are there any items that if we take it out our score gets better we may want to remove them or are there items that if we take them out our score gets worse therefore we do not want to remove them the again the values for these can be anywhere between zero and one and the closer we get to one the more confidence we have that that is a crucial item for our recipe so in this particular case we've built a pretty good measure of sports fandom We've got a good alpha, we've got a good pattern of correlations, we've got each item contributing to the total, and if we take anything out, our score is going to go down. So it looks like these six items make us a really good measure. We could go ahead and average them and get that sports fan total that would give us a good score for people. Now, let's look real quick at what happens, though, if we throw in a stinker. So we'll go back to scale and reliability. And let's say we have all these sports fan things and we decide to add, are you a smoker to the mix? Maybe that's a good part of being a sports fan. Maybe not. All right, but let's see what happens. When we run that alpha again, and now we're going to look at the second thing, we can see, hey, our alpha went down a little. And that still looks pretty good, right? We didn't necessarily hurt things by throwing in the smoking. But I'll bet you that smoking item does not do a whole lot for the measure. See those zeros and the negative correlations? This item does not play well with everything else. It doesn't fit the pattern. And it makes um, some of the other correlations between these things actually be impacted as well. The other place we can see that we've got a stinker item is that these are all still good, but this does not correlate with the total of everything else. And our alpha levels here are still really strong, but they've decreased from the last time. And it shows if we take that smoking item out, we've got a better measure again. Okay. So we can see that's not good for our recipe. We could see further how bad this could be by just throwing in some other random things. So let's throw in age and let's throw in height and how many concerts you go to. And, um, you know, are you single? Okay, so now we've got things that this is totally not part of our recipe what happens to our alpha when we throw in a bunch of junk well now our alpha is really bad okay because we've got these things that work well and a whole bunch of seemingly non-useful things look at the pattern of correlations negative zeros right this stuff is not jiving well with what we want to do right it's detrimental to our alpha level it's made it below that 0.7 standard, and none of those items are connecting with other things. If we look at the item total correlation, 
Again, our first ones still seem good enough, but now they look bad too because there is no good total score. We've really messed with our chicken soup. And these things are negative. They're having a bad impact. Right? Our Chromebacks alpha, if we take stuff out, is in danger. We don't have good numbers here. Right? It gets better if we take these things out. So we've got a really messy recipe. So hopefully you can see from this that the closer your items hold together, the more consistent it is. And then you'd have some confidence if you're actually using it in your research that you are reliably capturing the concept. And you could trust it then when you start to look at other relationships with other factors that this thing, the sports fan recipe, is doing what it's supposed to do. Thanks.